Happy Monday! It's Amy here with Sugar Hill Art Studio. How is everyone? It's art snack time! Woohoo! I can't believe it. It is Monday. It is February 27th. We are almost through with February. That's insane. That is insane. All right. So I am getting things up and running. And okay, here's February prompts. They're like over tomorrow and I've got a new one coming up. Barch is here on Wednesday and I've got an adorable little um, accordion mini March journal. I'm, I've got all the details and everything ready to go for March. You're going to want to make sure I added the link, so make sure you grab it. Um, and be sure you're on my email newsletter list because we're going to start doing a lot of communication that way and I don't want you to miss anything. Hello everyone. Hello Lori. Hi Pam. How are you? So we are going to start communicating a lot more through email and here as well, but through email. So you want to grab the link, whether it's up above, down below, wherever it is, probably down below. Um, and make sure you are on my email newsletter list. Hello, Gwen, because I have a lot of details for March and different things to share with you, and I don't want you to miss it. So be sure you're on that email newsletter. Okay, so February prompts. How'd everybody do? Did anybody get all 21 done? All 21? I'm still not done. <clears throat> I'm still not done. I went on a total... Uh, total crazy journaling extravaganza last week, um, but throughout the weekend I haven't had a chance. So <clears throat> January, February, my journals are six by six. They follow the prompts. I have them here. I will probably continue this so I have all 12 for the, um, you did trace, you're awesome. So I have all 12 for the year. Um, that's kind of my, my another one of my goals for the year. So I will be making another March journal. However, however, I know I'm doing that. I don't know what you all are doing, but this is what I wanted to show you. A little fun mini journal, okay? A little mini journal. So they're three by three and we are going to be putting March prompts in this little accordion journal. How cute. I mean, you don't have to, but I want to show you. And you can use this for many, many different things. So I wanted to be sure I showed you all of that. Um, what did I forgot to share this over into... Can one Do one of you mind um, sharing this video over into the free group? for me perhaps and you're always welcome anybody's always welcome to sprinkle wherever wherever you want to but here's what we're doing okay right now if somebody could do that for me I'd greatly appreciate it if not no big deal all right <clears throat> um here's what you need here's what you need thanks Laura um I am using the Canson watercolor. You know I'm a big fan of this. This is the 9 by 12. If you don't have or want to use the 140 pound watercolor paper, if you have a mixed media, 9 by 12 is the size that you want. Okay? Works really, really perfect. So easy. So grab a 9 by 12 piece of paper. I am using the 140 pound watercolor paper. Okay? So nine by 12, what we're going to do is we're going to cut this into three, three inch strips, okay? I'm gonna turn you down just a bit so you can kind of see what I'm working at. Yeah, this is super fun, super fun, super easy, and just gives us, you know, when we change up what we're doing with prompts each month or how we're doing our art or even just the size, it spurs on a new thought process, right? Okay, so let me just, this is a nine by 12, so I know I can go to six. And I can go to three. 
H. All right, so now I have three three inch strips. So easy, right? All right, let's get rid of this. Three strips. Fold one in half. Okay, so you're just gonna fold it in half. And you're gonna fold it in half again. Okay. I just watched your bubble live from 21. I didn't know you then. It was fabulous. Oh, thanks, Lord. Yeah, that was, that. it's an oldie. <laughs> Some of the older videos are kind of fun to watch. Uh, they're interesting for me to watch. I kind of want to um, redo some of those. And that is another project that I'm working on, you know, building those over and organizing. Um, but do you see that? So far, you're going to do it with all three pieces. So one, two, I try not to, I really I try not to do it on the table so it doesn't shake so much. If I don't lock these wheels, this table shakes like crazy and you guys bear the, bear the brunt of it. It's the one downfall for this stand. I'm kind of leaning. I want to make sure you guys can see what I'm doing, though. You need to see me. You need to see what I'm doing more so. Okay, so now we have three strips folded into four. All right? One, two, three, four. And I kind of fold them the opposite way. You're going to accordion fold them. Okay? So you're just going to fold it the other way, and you're but you're accordioning. Accordion, accordion, folding it in an accordion style. Accordingly. What is that? But I like to fold whatever side I did in an opposite direction, just so it's got a good bend to it. Okay. So now, here we have our three pieces and our handy dandy Yoohoo stick. Okay. So right there, and we just need to interlock them together. So we get a longer journal, okay? Do you see, I'm just gonna interlock these together with glue. There's other ways you can do it. This is the easy, simple way that I like to do. So I just put it down, this Yoohoo glue stick, if you don't have one, invest in one. It's the bomb, baby. And you're just gonna lay that Right in there. Okay, there's one. And we're gonna do the same thing again. We're just gonna slide that in there. And just get the glue on there. I'm sure you could use a lot of other different types of glues if you want, but I love this glue stick. It dries quickly, it's not too goopy. It holds perfectly well, this nice thick paper. Okay, I know that was so crazy, right? Now, you're going to just make sure everything, your book is folded into an accordion. And you have two, four, six, eight, ten. So you end up with 20. Okay, you could do, you could do, um you'll have 20 prompts instead of 21, or you can add in another strip. It's up to you. Or you could do a little tip out, which if you sign up for my newsletter, make sure you're on the email list, you will get a bonus little feature. Um, and I'll show you how to do like a last tip out kind of thing. So here we go. All right. Want to know what I'm using? Want to know how what gets me really bright, fabulous colors? Tombow markers. Tombow markers. Um, you can get away with just one pack. I think a pack, like just their their color sets, come in eight or twelve, probably closer to eight. And when you catch them on sale, whether it be one of the big craft stores like Michael's or Hobby Lobby, 
or from Amazon or Dick Blick Art Supply. There's a lot of places. Catch them on sale or use the coupon. They're well worth it. They'll last a very long time. Okay, we're just going to start. You, you kind of pick a side. I got you hooked on Tombos. They're really versatile. They're water soluble. Now you could use uh, watercolors. You can use acrylic. You can use whatever you want. Here's what we're going to do. I have a little bit of water here. Okay. I have um, just my uh, scrap towel. I do have a paper towel too in case I need to blot a little bit. I'm going to move this over. You don't need that right in your way. Um, my Tombow markers. And I did grab just some of the... Uh, I have these in case I want to get into them. Watercolors. But for that bright color that you guys are always commenting on and loving, right? That bright color comes in Tombows. It also comes in, you can use mermaid markers, you can use inks, you can use anything you want to. Just remember, like the Tombows, your watercolors, your mermaid markers, your inks, not all of them are permanent, steadfast. So as you layer on top, you need to be aware. I know that I'm keep whatever I'm laying, layering on top of this as I work along is going to be perfectly fine with the Tombows. If so, so for any of my uh, Sugar Hill Creative members that are from my membership in here watching, you know I say all the time we've got to, um, you've got to experiment, you've got to play, you've got to push yourself out of your comfort zone, you've got to get to know your materials. I'm sorry, I'm going to sneeze, my nose is itchy. You have to know your materials. But the biggest thing I want you to do is I want you to play with color. I want you to see what goes together. I want you to experiment. And that's what is so great about this little project. So you, we've got the square. I am a big fan of kind of leaving a little bit of space. So I'm gonna kind of get it nice and juicy. You see I'm just coloring in there. I will pull you in. It likes, it likes one hand. Maybe, there we go. Kind of scooch down just a little bit so you can see a little bit better. All right, so I'm just adding the color down. And um, I changed my mind. You have to think when you're doing this, just kind of play, have fun. But think about, you know, your bright colors or your dark. I'm just going to kind of see how I'm... And then they can overlap or they don't have to. You see how I'm kind of just playing there. And then I'm just going to get a brush, whatever brush I want, and I'm going to start to... You see, it's just like playing with watercolor. I'm going to get into this green and start to work that. And I'm working it until start to blend in okay so do you see how I start to blend the two colors together I actually like my round a little bit better and I'm just deciding you can leave some white don't be afraid to leave white I should say okay the amount of water you have allows you to get to know your color you're pulling some of that green you see that Kind of, you do pick up the color. So if you want to totally get rid of the color that you had on there, you need to really rinse it. You can pull it, and then you're just gonna kind of play until you get what you want. Don't resist overworking it. Okay, resist overworking the color, especially on the inside. And then just kind of pull that down a little bit more. And there's my first square. Let's kind of rinse that off. Make sure I'm still in view. And let's just go to another. Uh, you could do a total square around. And you can be very specific or random. 
with your colors. I'm just going to kind of put a really light blue in there and let's see what happens on this one. All right, really wet. We're going to get some blue in there. Like I said, don't be afraid to leave some white. Uh, oftentimes I overwork it and I don't get as much white as I would like into my pattern. All right, you see how it's going to start to just, it's just going to start to flow. So fun. And so each square, you're just going to play with your colors and you're going to start to determine, you know, what, what you, what you like, how you want to blend your colors together. And it's just a new, it's a new little canvas each time, each time. I love, love, love this. So, so far. What if, we, what if we go in circles and then we bring it out into some lighter pink. Let's see what happens there. I want to, I want to get to the outside first. Oops. Did this one a little more in the round. And some of these darker colors, I love. As soon as you touch them with water, they're just electrifying. They're so much fun. And you can just really bring your color around. You can get it to run. If you want it to. Right? And give it to run a little bit so I get that pink pulling through there. See? It, uh, I mean, when I tell you guys this is very relaxing, I'm not even kidding. And you can see how fast everything happens, like how fast it comes together. All right, and for me, like just kind of sitting here playing with the colors is the most fun. I absolutely love, and I like trying some darker ones on the in middle and some light, but you can, they don't have to be, you know, what if we kind of run that. Maybe a little bit of that pink and we'll come into big orange. Let's see what happens there. You see how random I'm being? <laughs> now I, I, sometimes really do like to start with either the lightest color or the least. So here my pink is kind of, I don't have a lot of it, but I can come around. And come in here. Okay, and I got into the yellow. Now let's, let's activate this girl. I love this. this orangey color is actually, it's 905. Um, it's just a pretty, not quite salmon, but not quite melon. It's got a lot of pinkier tones to it, so I love it. And I want some of that to stay through there. I like it. 
super easy, right? Now, if you were working, that's the Tombos. But, oh, goodness. I have beat this thing up. My white gouache has cracked and gotten all over everything in here, and I just cracked it again. But you could, say, for instance, you're using watercolor, and you certainly can mix them up. You can mix your watercolor with your Tombow or whatever, but I can just add some water down in there and get into my opera pink because I love it. All right. Let me make sure I'm still in frame and let's kind of, let's kind of touch some, do a little wet on wet. And let's go with, where's my lighter purple? They're all mixed up right now. Um, I think it's this one. the lighter kind of get some of this now obviously you can go very bold with a color like I am using all different types of colors you know March is the like month like when I think March I think rainbows probably because of St. Patrick's Day and the leprechauns and the pot of gold I don't know but they bring you know, it brings rain, it's a change of season. I definitely like rainbows in March. And so having a plethora of color here kind of reminds me of a rainbow. So I'm just gonna pull that and bring it. Okay, and remember if something's going too dark or too light or you don't really like what's happening, you can blot these. You can blot them. This one, if I really don't like how they're blending in, which I don't mind it, but look at, I could practically take it all off right and start over again just enjoy it. if you don't it's damp so you don't want to take a tombow to damp paper you you need it to be you need it to be um dry otherwise you're going to kind of beat up your felt tip in here. I'm just going to kind of leave that one alone. It is what it is. It's very pink. Right, so just have fun adding your, laying your colors down. And then um, you, I will do a little bonus in the email of different ways to Attach, of course, I will introduce to you my favorite, um, all my favorite little ribbons and places where I buy them. Um, I make sure that comments, comments, comments. The pink one looks like it did look like a geo, didn't it? Um, so in the newsletter, I have different ways to attach or whatnot, but I just love my sari ribbon, or um, you can use some handmade ribbons that you've made, perhaps. You know, if you've dyed some or whatever, there's something about just adding a sweet little ribbon around a journal. Right, when we tie it up, just to have our little journals, some ribbon. Love, love, love. To just have some ribbon. And you have a little journal. And so each day, you're working in a little three by three square. 
What do you guys think of that? Is that going to be challenging for you to work small, like in a three by three square, or are you going to love it? Um, you know, kind of, kind of challenge you. It's very simple. This, like, of course, you can do so much more with an accordion journal, but this is a very simple, easy, basic start. So if you ever, you know, if you're looking for a quick little journal or something, but this is just a good way. You have color down on each page, okay? I've got the ones we were just working on drying, and I'll go through all of this, and I'll let it dry completely, then I'll flip it over and do the back side, okay? Super, super simple. You could stay very, keep everything in, in the same color tones of whatever you wanted, or you certainly can, um, you know, get bright and wild, have everyone different. I really, really suggest to you to have fun blending your colors. If you buy a pack of Tombos, those colors all go together, right? If they put something down, um, if they put a, a pack together, those colors all blend together. And if there's eight of them in there, there's a ton of different color ways you can do, right? Um, and you can come up with so many different, because even if I took this purple and this blue and reversed them or did it entirely different, you know, they're gonna, it's going to look different. So, so don't think you have to go buy tons. I've collected my combos over time. Some of, some of my markers are super, super old, and they're just a little, just, they have a little bit, but as soon as I touch them with water, bam, they're activated. So uh, uh, from what I understand, uh, washable Crayolas are the same, they're, they're the, it's the same concept. I'm going to tell you that the boldness and the brightness that you guys all love all the time of my colors. You're always complimenting on the brightness. That's Tombow's. You're not going to get that from a Crayola. Um, it just, the, the pigment isn't there. It's not, the quality isn't there. So then you have all 20 and you have a little mini journal ready for 20 prompts for March. Super easy, right? I started a mini accordion journal with watercolors and blues, but I haven't added anything yet. See, that's the beautiful thing about, you can't, this is one piece, one sheet of 9 by 12 watercolor paper. You could do it in mixed media paper. That's, what are you going to mess up, right? It's teeny, tiny. It's one piece of paper. It's not costing you a lot. And you're never wasting you're not wasting your time, your materials, your energy, your creative intellect if you're playing with your supplies and what you have. That's what journaling is about. Journaling is the practice, not the perfection. It's the progress, not the perfection. Um, so you need to, you have to explore and don't be afraid of failure because even if it starts to not, you know, you're, you're, oh, I don't want to mess this up. It came out so beautiful or whatever. That's why, you know, start with one like this. Sylvia, if you don't want to mess up the one that you started on or whatnot, do something really simple like this and kind of play first and then take what you've learned from, you know, your basic and, <clears throat> excuse me, and put it into your, um, you know, then put it into your bigger or nicer journal. You gotta play, you gotta experiment, and you have to not be afraid of, per like you have to let go of perfection. You have to have progress. That's why we journal, okay? None of us are gonna go grab a, a 36 by 36 canvas and paint a masterpiece and sell it for millions if we don't play in our journals first. You gotta, you gotta play in your journal, that's why we do it. Plus, the creative release, the, the getting to know your supplies, the time you're spending, these are important things. All right, everybody, so that is the uh, February journal. The prompts will come out Wednesday morning. Uh, if you're on my newsletter, then you'll get them sooner, you'll get them tomorrow, um, tomorrow night, and yeah, so get on that newsletter, get on there. 
I won't harp you. I don't drive you crazy. I promise. Uh, it's going to be a Monday thing, although you'll get one on Wednesday because that's the beginning of the month. So you'll always get it on the beginning of the month. But on Mondays, the newsletter will be going out just to, to give a synopsis of the week, what's going on, a little tidbit, some fun things for you to read, um, if I do any specials, when my membership opens, classes, workshops, things like that. But there's always going to be something with art snacks and lots of free things for you too, okay? All right, everybody, thank you very much. You have a beautiful day and I will...